Greetings, Palaxians. Today on the Bounty Board, we've got a Loki Season 2 premiere theory, our honest opinions about the Ahsoka finale, and your initiation to the Guardians of the Galaxy podcast. Kick up that warp drive and let's punch it! Let's get it! Dude, I'm so glad to be doing this with you guys. What's going on, guys? Hey! We are back, baby! Hey, for those of you guys who don't know, my name is MT, and um, this is my these are my friends, Whitney and Tommy. What's going on, Hi. guys? We're good, man. This is so fun. I'm so excited to do a Dude, podcast. Dude, I have not seen you guys, guys in a bazillion, a million years. I'm so jealous that you guys live in far, sunny California. Far too long. It's yeah. too yeah. long since we've talked about our favorite shows. Yes, yes. But we're back. Big Head Gang is back. Peaches <laughs> and Cream Gang is back. Hey, you can't stop and the Peach and Cream train. That sounds weird, but like we're just going to roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 seems, it seems way more aggressive than it is. It's really friendly. Very friendly. Uh, let me just tell our, uh, our wonderful audience, our friends, our pals. Our yes. pals. Our pals. This, this sweet, sweet podcast is a little sprout that will blossom into a vine, a poisonous vine that will take <laughs> over the internet. But yes. for now, that little sprout exists on YouTube. We are hoping to have this podcast out on multiple platforms by the yes. Marvel's release on my birthday, November 10th. So sit tight. for those of you that take your podcasts a little differently than the YouTube way, uh, we're going to get there for you. So uh, be patient with us. We're growing. We're learning. We're, we're loving. little babies right now. We're just little baby Palaxians. Exactly. We just don't know what we <laughs> We'll evolve along the way. Yeah. All right. So let's get down to business to defeat. The uh, HUD. That's literally what I was thinking about. Every time someone says <laughs> that, I'm like, to to defeat. Business. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite uh, song sung by a white man uh, pretending to be a Chinese person. Wait, was uh, that a white dude who voiced? That was a white dude. I think it's it Shock Donny. I think it's Donny Osmond. Really? Okay, yeah. I did not know that. Hey, Me. if it's not, we're editing this out. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Wait, I, I have no idea. I was like, uh, Mulan came out when I was like what seven. And so right. I was not in the habit of uh, looking up voice actors at that right. age. I, I, I honestly thought like that the cartoons were real gone. at that point. I was like, hey, this is yeah. a real thing that happened. Great. <laughs> Just a is real guy. <laughs> scientifically accurate. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm with you guys. I'm older than you, so I was too old. I should have known better, but I also thought the cartoons were real. <laughs> and that's why it took me uh, 18 years to finish uh, 12 years of school. Now. <laughs> What's going on in this world? We're loco for Loki, right? Yes. We're all Loki'd up. Loki, so we're high key, excited. Uh, Hit me with I that mean, Lokio drift. Yes, the Lokio <laughs> drift. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I want to see Mobius drift a freaking jet ski by the end of this Dude, season. Dude, yeah. I demand it. Better. Oh, she better. <laughs> oh, and uh, I, I, I'm so sorry for repeating this joke to anyone who does follow me on Twitter. Uh, hi, thank you for doing that, by the way. Uh, but <laughs> my favorite thing ever was when uh, Obi just fixed his suit with duct tape because that's exactly what Ludacris does in fact. Yeah. Right? His, his suit breaks. He just, he's like, I need more duct tape. And then Yo. that's like the first thing that OB does. And I was like, holy shit. He went to the fucking Ludacris school of fixing space <laughs> too. Fa fa fast nine science is always uh, the right kind of science to go after. Bro. So we're, we're one episode into Loki. We've got another episode coming up in just a few days. Many, many questions. Uh, you know, the the ending of season one where where uh, Loki heads into the library and uh, Hunter B-15 and Mobius don't know who he is was certainly a good cliffhanger because we're like, oh, wait, this entire did this entire past season not matter? Now right. we find out that it's all about timelines. And MT, one of the people we've met in the current timeline and then actually went far back into the past timeline is this new character, OB. And you've got a mm. pretty pretty good theory about him that we want to get out there right now so what do you got talk to us about ob well gang um even though ob is a very very uh, wholesome looking man and he's uh mm. looks like a man that who would give a good hug um and yeah. who would really care about your um yeah. your troubles and would uh try mm -hmm. to ask you about your emotions very nice man i don't trust him for a second not a single <laughs> gosh darn second that man <laughs> has some grievances everybody and that's my theory i feel like obi 
is the secret villain of Loki season two, because this season doesn't really have a villain outside of Kang. And we know that Kang is going to be the big bad for, you know, Secret Wars and King Dynasty and all that stuff. So Mm. I think that Obi um, is enacting some um, workplace um, disgruntledness if that is a oh, word, it is now. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it, it makes look working in the post office look like a goddamn dream job. Right? Like, like it, my like, God. Like, like what this- is the what is the term for going postal when you're just trapped in like a, a time <laughs> fiddling invention weird room forever? Like, oh, and you uh, don't go- sleep. And you he don't sleep. Right? I don't ever sleep because this because the uh the request stack up. Right? He's and like, like, I'll fall behind. Oh my God. It's so oh sad. God. <laughs> Mobius and Loki don't even be like, oh my God, that's so horrible. They're like, all right, whatever. No. We need your help. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't sleep. Like, too. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, like let come me on, man. on to that by forcing you to help us instead. Right? Yeah. Like, no one cares about OB. And I feel like that is the reason why OB is going to, is doing all this chaos in season two. I feel like he's orchestrating all of this, um, this madness because. OB is literally the only person that knows how the TVA works outside of He Who Remains, because He Who Remains is dead now. That dude is like, he's gone. Got he got stabbed in the right. chest. I don't know if you guys missed that in last season. Uh, Sylvie <laughs> was not happy with that man um, no. and his chest cavity. Oh, she was not uh, happy at all. She just ma- like, basically made him SpongeBob. Um, she just like punted her, her boyfriend slash variant slash lover. He just punted him through like a time door and then was just mm-hmm. like stab stab. It was just like God, Sylvie. Sylvie, Yo, damn. Sylvie was committed. That's the true was. passion for what you do. Absolutely. Now, uh, empty, so here's my question before hmm. before you go on with this because this is a question I've had about the TVA in general. Okay. Is it possible like these people all say they were created by the TVA before they find out that they're variants. But in Obi's case, that feels like he might be the only one that's true for, right? Like Mobius mm-hmm. was taken off the sacred timeline, uh, you know, presumably from some time that had jet skis. You know, we know that right. Hunter B-15, she tells Sylvie that she saw herself and she was happy. You know, so we know she had a life out there. We can assume Renslayer had a life out there. So I'm always kind of the, the, the mechanics of the TVA are always interesting to me, like, how do these people go on with their day to day lives? Do they need sleep? Do they need to eat? Like, you know, mm. we see in the trailer, he's eating the key lime pie. Is it possible OB is like an android created by he who remains Ooh. or something like that? Yeah, that maybe he was bananas. like created within the TVA by the right. TVA. Right. Like, oh, oh yeah, that that'd would be, be crazy. Very interesting. And I think that but- that would also make him turn him down a villainous path because, man. Like if you weren't allowed to ever leave and you knew no life outside of that, you'd you'd go nuts. You would freak out. You would absolutely, absolutely. freak out and destroy the planet and the world and every timeline, which I totally think might hundred percent. Like if, if, if Obi is a robot, like like the um like the timekeepers were in season one, that would be a twist and a half. That would be so yeah. fun. But also, you know, make him this like, you know, super like unstoppable for because you do see you saw age of ultron like robots have strength like they can freaking kick ass yeah. so like if, oh, yeah, if it went down to it and, and obi was revealed as a robot he could uh he could mess them up pretty pretty damn well because robots are not allowed it, in the tba for that reason most likely <laughs> and it, it also sets up that he who remains had a real like animatronic fetish like he was like oh yeah i'm gonna make oh, create absolutely. the absolutely uh, yeah. Absolutely. Don't let that guy loose in a Chuck E. Cheese. You'll regret no. it. <laughs> no. You'll, you'll the he'll, day. He'll, he'll spend 10 nights at Freddy's. Five is <laughs> not enough for him. <laughs> five nights for business, five nights for pleasure. Uh, That's right. Nice and balanced. That's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I even though like I do like that theory of Obi being a robot, and like that would be nuts if it was true. But Obi I honestly feel Obi. like <laughs> Obi the Robi. Oh my. I, you know what? I would take a whole Disney Plus series. Of Obi the Roby. <laughs> oh, <man. Hell> yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. It's so yeah. wholesome. Um, but no, I, I honestly feel like Obi could potentially be, um, this is just a wild theory here, a uh, a variant or of Kang called Mr. Griffin from the Avengers comics. Um, who owns Kang Tower. And like, when, when when Loki- is Mr. Griffin? Mr. Griffin is, um, he's a dude in the, the Marvel comics that ends up buying um i think stark tower at one point and he oh, just ooh. repurposes it into like king 
he brings it into his uh, Kang Enterprises. Oh, Empire. it's the uh, Kang is with a Q, right? Yes, it's, it's the like, Q E N G K Industries, or yes. I forget what it was called. So he owns Kang Industries in the present time, but like he, the reason mm. why he's there is because he's stranded on Marvel Earth and he can't travel through time. So he's waited like two thousand years, and he built an empire over time because he was like mm. time locked or something. Yeah, I feel like this is the Loki season two could be the seeds to bring us. Mr. Griffin for a future, uh, maybe like a Young Avengers installment, or just like you know, as basically as the person that buys um, Avengers Tower, because we saw in um, the look uh, towards the end of Loki season two when they're in the void, we see Kang Tower just like just chilling there as like a remnant oh, from right. something in the timeline. Um, right, so, I, forgot, right. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, so like, and when when Loki goes back in time in in uh, the first episode of, of season two, um, we see that he wears a green tie, much like um, Mister Griffin does in the comics. So like, yeah. Yeah, underneath Loki's jacket is like a you know a dress shirt with a green tie, which is what um, Mister hey. Griffin wears. Damn, so that is I cool. A, a I hunch. believe you. <laughs> that it's Mister Griffin. Can also, because <laughs> in the comics, Mister Griffin can um, cause people to time slip. He can control other people. Oh, this is like moving through time. <laughs> so like, like, like oh, he is secretly um the one making Loki time slip just so Mobius and Loki could go visit him and he could send them to die. Um because mm. like, dude, he gave Mobius a cracked suit on purpose. There were so many suits. He's like, you know yeah. what? Here's the cracked one so you die faster because you never visited me and no you one visited me. You never visited me and you don't remember my name, and I have a whole exactly. story for you. <laughs> Bro, right. like, Obi is the backbone of the TVA, and no one appreciates him. And I feel like that is why he's uh, he's going rogue. He's going rogue. He's going to break bad. He's going to break bad. He's gonna break he's, bad. Right? Mm. I, mean, I, I want to see, like, a, a very angry Obi. Like, that'd be scary to see Obi just, like... Angry like, short round be would be terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> I would, I I would probably cry because I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> what do you guys think? He's just the nicest man. Uh, first of all, that's what I think. Second of all, dude, no, I, as soon as like I was realized like how disrespected he must feel because like I would feel so bad if nobody ever visited me. And then when they finally did, I remembered everything about yeah. our visit and they remembered nothing. And they were just like, mm. ah, yeah, like that would make me so sad. And so as mm. soon as like that stuff happened, I was just like, yeah, dog. No, he's uh, there's no way this guy isn't going dark side because he has been mistreated. He has mm. been trapped down there for God knows how long. I do really like the idea that maybe he was like created and born within the TVA and is the only true like native citizen of that place. That'd be really, mm. really dope. Yeah. Kind of like the genesis of like the TVA is like King creates Obi and then maybe we don't know how old uh, Renslayer is, so it's like maybe it's like Kang, Kang and Renslayer are Adam and Eve, and Obi is like <laughs> like their creation. Not to get <laughs> biblical with it, as I always tend to do, turn things biblical. MT, I also agree. I think your theory is really sound. I think we we haven't had I a really the great Mr. Griffin stuff. I never like I haven't read that one, so I mm. I would have never even thought about that. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Tommy, yeah, I didn't I, interrupt you. I was just really excited. No, 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 no that's all good. Sorry. I think I think like yeah, I think like that makes sense. It also it allows for a new big bad that's kind of like a second tier villain. We haven't had a lot of second tier villains emerge in the MCU mm. as of late, so it's like great. This person could be in future film projects as a underling of Kang or a variant of Kang, but not, you know, prime Kang that's going to be our main villain. So right. I, I love that. I think I think that's a really great theory. I love it. Yeah, because yeah. like, you know, the, the ending of season one basically promises like different variants showing up to cause trouble. So like it would be crazy if he who remains maybe like, you know, at the end of the, the, the first time where where he beats all the other Kangs, he kept a version of Kang. It, as like uh, to work at the bottom floor. It's like, all right, I'm going to wipe your memory and put you on the bottom floor. But before he died, he was like, hey, by the way, you're Kang. Um, have you're fun with Kang. that. <laughs> <laughs> you're Good luck with that, bro. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, certainly we, uh, we, we, hope, uh, we hope to achieve some closure from OB. Speaking of closure, mm. we want to thank our sponsor for today's show, 
Henderson and Henderson horse mort- morticians. Yes. Henderson and Henderson have been doing uh, dignified horse funerals for over 200 years. <laughs> Not a lot of people know this, but most horses are left by the side of the road when they pass away. It's but true. down at Henderson and Henderson, they will give you a proper burial uh, for your religious belief of choice. You want to sit Shiva for a stallion, you can. You want to have a wake for uh, a, a Waikiki roaming free horse, you can do that as well. You want to have a full-on funeral for, for a filly, that's available. Uh, Henderson & Henderson promise you with this code, 1-800-HORSE-BURIAL, you'll get 75% off uh, a horse size casket today. Guys, this is a great deal. But it's not real. Fortunately, Whitney's about to explain how you could advertise on this podcast. Wait, what oh do you mean gosh. it's not real? I went to our Tax's funeral just the other day. What are you talking I'm about? So- I'm sorry, it's not Bojack's real. Bojack's funeral was beautiful. Jesus Christ. What are we- <laughs> so was Mr. Ed's. I mean, of course. Of course. Guys, horse funerals are real. Henderson and Henderson is not a real company. <laughs> All but right, we'd love to sense. solicit a lot of horse funerals this summer alone. Yeah. So, well, those were all real and 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 very. The grief was real, but what it's also real is this podcast is for sale. It can be bought and sold. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, we would love to get some sponsors. Uh, we will we will make your ads sound just as realistic as a horse morticians, which you mm-hmm. have to admit is really <laughs> hard to make sound realistic. That's yeah. how good we are, baby. We will totally take your ad more seriously if that's what you want. But mm-hmm. if you don't, hi, hello, please, <laughs> please, please, please sponsor our show. We need it. We have no money. We are very poor. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we, we take it as a personal favor. I'll, I'll be honest. You got a, you got the best in the game, Whitney Van Lanningham, reading your ads. You can't buy that type of delivery, okay? <laughs> it, can't, it can't be taught. It can only be... It can only come organically from inside, uh, much like much like the force, much which like makes me force. think of which, which great transition. I'm on my A game, guys. This podcast <laughs> has to work out for me. Uh, <laughs> you know, Ahsoka just wrapped up, and it's been let's be fair, polarizing, right? It's been it's a true. it's been a show that has had. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, I think valid criticisms, but also I think maybe slightly overreactive criticisms, uh, and, and, yeah. and, and kind of our usual as fans, as super fans, we tend to be impatient. And if something isn't delivered to us in the here and now, we, uh, we get angry and, and we don't give the benefit of the doubt that there's a, a longer, uh, plan for these, right. these universes, whether it's the MCU or it's Filoni and Favreau and, and Kef- Kathleen Kennedy and all those people, you know, uh, getting Star Wars out. So Ahsoka wrapped up. I liked it. MT, I think you liked it, right? Dude, I it? freaking loved Ahsoka. Like, it, yeah, it very yeah. much felt like an extension of Star Wars Rebels. So, like, if you yes. love Rebels, then you probably liked Ahsoka a lot. Um, Absolutely. But, like, I, I just thought that seeing, you know, Ahsoka in live action and, like, seeing her develop as a character, as a very reserved mm-hmm. master... After, you know, mm-hmm. oh, sorry, I don't want to spoil everything for, for Whitney, who hasn't, like, seen no, no, that's um, what's the going point. on. Okay, that's the point, you guys. <laughs> so, I have, I have, just really quick interlude. I have, uh, not unfortunately, I have been very lucky to spend all of my time in the land of ooh for, like, the last month. Uh, there's been two episodes a week. It's been a lot. Those little babies are packed with Easter eggies. And we still have some coming out. Uh, if you're waiting for those on Whitney Vision, please don't be mad at me. I am doing my best. Uh, my but God, because of be that, patient. Well, you're talking about a Fiona able, and Cake, right? Yeah, Fiona and Cake. It is right. so good. Please go watch that show in addition to Ahsoka. I swear we're going to talk about Ahsoka. But because of that, <laughs> I uh, did not have time to watch the show, but I really wanted to be in on the conversation. So I mm. only watched the last episode. I have no yes. other context in my mind. As, and as George you, Lucas you intended. About it. As George Lucas <laughs> intended to only watch yeah. the finale. <laughs> so please, by the way, it's fine. I'm going to re- I'm gonna start over at the beginning, but I it's fine. I already know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think like this is a good uh, this is a good peek behind the curtain because you know for our jobs at all of the different you know media companies that we've worked at in the past we have to watch a absolute fuck ton of content like oh, we have to consume <laughs> and there are times where we're asked to go out and talk about something and it's like I don't know 
if I even can, like, if I know about this thing, <laughs> I've got to like research it or like, it's like a movie franchise. Maybe I've only seen one of the movies or something like certainly whenever it's like horror based, I have to go and do like a deep dive on the internet. Cause I don't watch a ton of horror movies. It's just like so, working in the minds. Um, right. it is. Uh, it's, it's just as hard. Working in the minds of, of HBO Max. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Max. Yes. Christ. Just Never Max. Get used to that. No. Well, cause it's wrong. It's horrible. It's the wrong thing to name it. It's, it's like sending your tweets out on X. But I think like, <laughs> nice. thank you. For me, it's, uh, I'm so interested, Whitney, on your take after watching just the final episode of Ahsoka. <laughs> me too. Because yeah. I think in the, the whole- I loved eight, it. I thought it was good. Yeah. I really liked no, it. No, for sure. But I think it's like, it is a lot. That is a finale. Yeah. Like def- mm-hmm. whether, you, whether you thought it was satisfying for character arcs or whatnot, you cannot deny that show wrapped up and, and said a lot in the final 10 minutes. There was a lot oh, yeah. of stuff. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. MT first on, uh, in general, yeah, MT th- first. Th- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things that you really liked about Ahsoka. Oh yeah. Like, like I was saying before, I really liked how Ahsoka like very much dived into you, like a, a more grown up and evolved Ahsoka and give us a very realistic take on like how someone who was trained by Anakin Skywalker would feel about that. Like as an adult, it's like, all right, like she secretly feels like she is a tool of destruction um, mm. that, you know, Darth, that was forged by the person that would become Darth Vader. And so like confronting that, like in a very special way that I will not spoil for Whitney um, is <laughs> was so great. And like that having the, the cameos that we've had this season were so special. And I feel like anybody who likes Star Wars, especially, you know, the prequel era stuff and like the, you know, the Clone Wars TV show should be watching Ahsoka because like it is mm-hmm. setting up some really like amazing dope ass shit for the future, especially like I cannot wait for like whatever Mandoverse movie that's going to be coming out um very soon because uh, that's going to be like a, a huge like a Mondo event because it feels like uh, Thrawn is the big bad for that. Mm-hmm. And everyone loves Thrawn and Thrawn was, has been like a fan favorite um, request for the Star Wars universe for so long. So it's so dope mm-hmm. to finally have him here um, in his um, Lars Mickelson glory. Um, <laughs> I love it's it. Been, it's been great. <laughs> well, how about you? What did you think? I uh, I loved it. I I loved the finale in the sense that to me, Ezra was finally Ezra in the finale. And yes. that had been, to me, a lingering question throughout the series was like, is there something off is there something weird? But then the, right. yeah, it's the weirdness is the isolation that he's felt. Right. And also, I think, like, you know, Sabine's character, uh, the way that they reunited was not inauthentic to the show, to, the, to Rebels, but it was like, you just think, like, she has found this lost person, and the relief she feels is almost, I think, it's hampered by the guilt she feels for what happened with Ahsoka at that point. Like, she can't mm. truly celebrate meeting, like, you know, finding Ezra until she properly processes what she feels is like the betrayal of Ahsoka. And at that point, I don't think she knows Ahsoka is alive even at that. I think she's going right. in assuming that she's dead. So to me, the the the, fi- the finale was a kind of a celebration and a real like great live action interpretation of the relationships in, in Rebels. You have mm. Ezra kind of messing with a droid, like, you know, messing with Hu Yang to like build the lightsaber, but then also learning. You invoke Kanan's name, which I really loved. I mean, the only person we really need justice for is my man Zeb, who just right. Got Where the hell is Zeb, bro? Like, uh, what? I don't know. I don't know why that happened. But overall, for me, uh, you know, I thought it was one of the more uh, complete start to finish stories that we mm. get in these live action TV shows. Maybe not since Mando, even season two of Mando. I think was the last time I was like this. This feels like we've we've seen some complete series arcs because i feel like a lot of times even in the marvel shows and star wars shows it's like they have to rush towards a finale this one felt like right. there was a lot to, to get to but they they kind of at least visited each uh plot point and it, even if it is a cliffhanger it's out there and and certainly it feels like it will be discussed in a future iteration so yeah my overall take is i really liked it Hell yeah, now, for one person who watched one episode of it <laughs> let's 
Listen, let's talk Ahsoka. <laughs> I, yes. I went into it being like, I don't know. I'm not going to know what the heck is going on. And then like within the first five minutes, I was just like, oh, this is just like a one shot of D&D. I can get behind this. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, like, first of all, uh, I don't know what they're really called, but I was calling them the Red Wizards of Thay because they <laughs> act and behave just like the Red Wizards. <laughs> and they even have the cantrip green flame blade mm. that they give to the one red wizard yes. and so i was very excited about that yes. and then sabine in addition to having the best color hair ever that is totally my favorite purple uh <laughs> she was a hundred percent the cruise barbarian she had a gun and a saber and then also a sword at one point and i was just like this girl is proficient in like every <laughs> single weapon. This is like totally the fighter of the group. I felt like Ezra was a little bit of a rogue. He was kind of the one who was like sneaky and getting on in there. And then he got out and he snuck back on home. I don't know. I just, I really loved it. I loved watching it. Like I was just watching a D and D one shot where it's like, Oh yeah, the party just dropped into this situation and mm. that's all. <laughs> That's that's uh, how I took it. But my absolute mm. favorite part was when Sabine was like, dude, I'll force push you across the thing. And then he just whaps it onto the yes. side of the ship. And he was like, whap, whap. And I was like, that is yeah. the I have never seen Star Wars do that. And it's yes. hilarious. He did the he did the Homer Simpson skateboard. Like, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> I I like that. I also loved actually having zombies like real yeah. right oh my god zombies how did yes. star wars do zombies before marvel did that's kind of crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah. also if only uh disney and universal had the relationship to license zombie stormtroopers for a halloween horror nights maze could you imagine oh, that would be so good because yeah. disneyland would, would never do that. that it would be too no. scary for the right. children right they already that's have, have like a sanctioned Frick. event that just allows adults to be in costume right. <laughs> like they already yes. have that they are not gonna not exactly. gonna fly no. with the horror I, nights that's certainly not gonna fly no no i wish though that'd be great but, Stumbling upon Mickey Mouse in a dark cavern would actually maybe be terrifying. I mean, I've done that many times, and it's just as great as you think. Um, <laughs> no kidding. For just $30, um, it, it becomes a great time. Uh, it's everything you'd imagine it would be. <laughs> yeah, I I, I think um, overall, like, I enjoyed, like, you had to get Thrawn out of uh, Exile as well. <laughs> so we've now got a major player. You know, we're basically building up to how did the First Order take back control of the galaxy yeah. for The Force Awakens, right? Like, we're bridging the gap. We're telling the stories in between uh, the end of uh, Return of the Jedi and the beginning of Force Awakens. So it's like, Thrawn seems like a key player in that happening. I mean, he's seen as a warlord, not mm. as like an em empirical officer anymore. He's just kind of seen as like almost the same as Jabba the Hutt, which is kind of funny in juxtaposition. <laughs> but now, now we have Thrawn in play. Like Thrawn is now going to be a part of like ostensibly Mando season four will have Thrawn involved in it somehow. I hope so. Right. Anyway. Because my biggest connection, my biggest, uh, I guess, not concerned, but like what, what I thought about was the characters in The Mandalorian don't seem to fit into the world of, of what Ahsoka established. I can't see Din Djarin yeah. and Grogu being in an episode of Ahsoka as much as I saw Ahsoka in Mandalorian. And I'm, I could be wrong about that, but like I feel like now that Thrawn is in the in is a like, you know, kind of uh, omniscient threat is like or uh, whatever. I don't know what the right word is. He's like an overall threat to everyone in the galaxy. I think that that does bring Din Djarin into it. You know, like mm. Din Djarin is going to be the type of person that sees someone like Thrawn, recognizes it's Moff Gideon on steroids, and is like, I have to step in and stop this. Yeah, no, that oh, yeah. makes sense, actually. I can, I, I also kind of, I, I get what you mean by feeling it, like feeling Ahsoka and Mando, but not feeling Mando and Ahsoka. That kind of makes sense. Mm, I, like, yeah. I, I get that. No, I, I mean, like, I, I definitely feel like I can see, like, the Mando crossing over with Ahsoka working out you know pretty decently because um you know they're both jedi narratives in a way because like grogu mm -hmm. he kind of ditched luke skywalker he's like i'm gonna do my own thing but like yeah. maybe he just needs a i just love that he was like actually <laughs> mom i hate kindergarten can you come yeah. pick me up like, yeah. no thing. Uh, 
I choose the really fun metal vest over your dumbass right. lightsaber. Get me out of here. This is uh, stupid. But like, you know, Ahsoka is a, a little bit of a different teacher, different type of teacher than Luke Skywalker, yeah. because at this time, Luke Skywalker is obsessed with, you know, finding out about the past and trying to rebuild the flawed Jedi order that, um, mm-hmm. you know, wasn't really the best. And like, it's sort of yeah. is what leads him into trouble in the sequel trilogy when he, almost kills Kylo Ren because he's so scared of, you know, building another Anakin Skywalker. So I feel like Ahsoka being someone who, you know, doesn't exactly care for the Jedi way of doing things. And like, because she herself got screwed over towards the end of the Clone Wars series. I think that Mm. she would be a better teacher for Grogu. Like when they first met, like she was like, hey, I can speak Grogu's language. He tells me his name. They were so cute together. It was so adorable. It was the best. Um, so like I would love to see like if like if um the next season of Mando is the last one, I would not mind to see Grogu transition over to, you know, the the Ahsoka side of things and like to be like taught under both uh, to be taught under Ahsoka with um Sabine. I feel like that'd be a nice little group of uh of, of people there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that like, I'm super excited for what's coming next after Ahsoka because like, especially like, you know, with the freaking, what's it called? The Acolyte. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if we, should, if we could talk about leaks. Can we talk about the trailer leak? Have you guys seen the trailer for the Acolyte? No. No. Oh my I God. Well, it. like that leaked on the internet. Um, and it's so good. It looks so <laughs> great. Um, I, we won't, we will obviously won't share it. Cause like, you know, we don't want to get in trouble, but like mm. for what I've seen, it looks very, very, very good. Um, cool. so awesome. I'm very I excited. No, for I didn't even leak. That's how out of it I am. I didn't even know it leaked. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on Twitter. I was like, Oh my God, Jesus mm. Christ, Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> has that, the information for everything. That um, damn Twitter. I mean, X. Twitter fucking stupid. Yeah, I was gonna anyway. say, please <laughs> empty. It's called X. Obviously, it's, X is an is a organic name that makes perfect sense, as opposed to Twitter, which rubbed everyone the wrong way. You know what's Nobody rubbing me the right birds. way? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, hate, I hate the concept of birds and, and tweeting. I like just a letter. You guys have some very exciting stuff, but I have nothing going on. My life is uh, basically <laughs> a monk's existence. I bake bread. I pet my dog. I watch uh, NFL football. And that's it. So why not plug our friend, Anna Vanston, who has yes. her YouTube channel, Goombana. She's doing gaming content, but she's doing it. It's not your gaming content, your average channel. It's not your she's, grandma's gaming content. That's right. <laughs> she's doing, she's oh. doing comprehensive breakdowns and Easter eggs, of course, but she's also doing character videos. She has one about the the, the top glow-ups uh, for villains in the Zelda universe. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you. Check out her YouTube channel, at Goombana. You won't regret it. It's a great channel. And also uh, her Twitch. Support. And her Twitch. Also oh, yeah. Combana. And her Twitch. Hell yeah. yeah. I she just, streams most nights, I think. So I just loved Catch her me. her Mario Heaven video. I was yes. dying laughing. That was yes. the funniest <laughs> shit. <laughs> that brain. What? Well, I don't know. I mean, like, I can't think of stuff like that. So got, hats off to her. But you guys are both up to some very exciting stuff. And I want to talk more about that before we get out of here. MT, you've got a very exciting new job. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, I'm. Uh, I smoke crack on the streets at night. Just kidding, that's yes. terrible. Don't do that's drugs, right. people. Uh, the <laughs> so MT I always make that joke. It's, yeah. <laughs> don't do drugs. No, um, no. I am so excited to be at Heavy Spoilers now. Um, for Paul yeah. has been uh, mm. such an amazing man. He basically scooped me up pretty sh- shortly after um, I was laid off. And so it's been super great to, you know, just make content with them. And like right now we're covering Loki. Um, I'm going to be covering Rick and Morty soon, which is super, super great. Yeah. Me, and, me and Whitney are going to be coming, covering Dude. Rick and Morty. It's going to be great. That's going to be so fun. We already have a group chat going with the other uh, cartoon creators. Yes. We're going to be covering Rick and Morty <laughs> and we are like ready to rock. We have like a team going. So yeah, just by the way, like if you see any videos, it's like, that's me, MT, uh, Ostruck Vox, or Johnny Two Cellos. Just know we're all in a group chat talking about how much we love yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. We're having the. I'm so excited that MT and I are we're like Rick and Morty Avengers over here. Yeah, um, we are. <laughs> let's go. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm over at Heavy Spoilers now. Just like you know, just full time, just uh, cranking out just various breakdowns and like um, analysis videos. So it's been really fun. What, what are you up to, Whitney? 
Oh, man. Uh, I have a little channel. You might have heard of it. Or it, not. I don't know. It's called Are Whitney Vision. Are you talking Vision. about Whitney Vision? <laughs> I sure Ooh. am, boys and girls <laughs> and everyone. Oh, boy. Uh, I uh, run Whitney Vision. It is very fun. I mostly uh, talk about animation because I really love cartoons. They are like my main cartoons source of happiness. Uh, I, as we were talking about earlier, I, I also still believe the cartoons are real. So we have a lot of like really cool stuff coming out. Obviously, Rick and Morty, we are going to finish the Fiona and Cake series. We are videos are being edited as we speak. I swear uh, we have a very cool Nimona video coming out. But oh, my God. I love Nimona. Not until the strike is over. We want to mm. make sure that everyone gets a fair deal and gets paid fairly, obviously, before we release that video. Um, but. Yeah, basically, we just have like a bunch of really cool, cool stuff coming up that I think you guys will like if you're into animation. And uh, yeah, please, please subscribe to all of us. Over the past like two days, I've been I watched the first two episodes of Fiona and Cake. That show is genuinely so good. And it's such a mind bending. I don't know what's going on so far, but like I'm very, very intrigued. Uh, oh, yeah, so, yes. I love it. Yeah, I really love it. It's really great. And the videos that you guys are doing at Whitney Vision are phenomenal. Thank great you. companion pieces. Thank my you. pleasure, my treasure. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, um, and I appreciate each and every one of you that subscribed to my YouTube channel that is my oldest headshot when I was 20 years old and has six, <laughs> six videos. Two of which my nephew uploaded himself. So <laughs> God, God bless all 300 of you that are on, uh, on my YouTube channel. I can't promise anything new coming to that space, but God darn it, if it does go there, you'll be the first. You'll be the first to know. I, I truly. Yeah, I want it. Tommy's nephew to upload this video because he he has a yeah, good same. track record. Just, so I'm all about it. Will, yeah. Let Tommy's nephew run the channel. We should just. He'd, have, love to, he'd be delighted. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just have him be our upload guy. Great. I would love that. Thumbnails. I'll let I'll let him know he's hired. Uh, So yeah, (laughs) you know, I I think before we get out of here, looking forward, guys, we're going to do this show. We're going to try and get these out once a week, and we're going to be talking about what's going on, uh, you know, TV and movie wise that we're interested in. We're going to give our theories, our wildest, most out there theories that we can do. We're going to have some fun. We might talk about some stuff that that we uh, that is kind of new for the three of us to be discussing. And I'm excited mm. to go on this adventure with you guys. Me yes. too. This is going to be I, so this fun. This is going to be so great. Like, We've and been, also let us know what you yeah. guys want us to talk about yes. in the comments so section. Please let us know. Yeah. yeah. If there's anything that you want us to cover, sky's the limit, baby. Just let mm-hmm. us know. We're probably into it. We like all the same yeah. stuff you guys like. Yeah. So. Seriously. Yeah, and sure. if you have like ideas for segments, drop them down too. We love oh, ideas. Dude, do it. Or like just anything you like. Yeah. Anything that you think is cool. Let us know. We'll we'll absolutely and like, happily take those suggestions into consideration because we just I mean, we just want to hang out with you guys. We just exactly like out. the main but point like, of this podcast is to just be three friends hanging out with Internet friends like you guys yeah. are part of the Palaxy. Come join the Palaxy. Give us your ideas. Give us your theories. We want to hear them all because uh, we're just a gang of friends. Who just like nerd shit? Like, let's just. Yeah. It's great. I love it. <laughs> Heck yeah! This is a this is a galaxy with enough room for everybody to be on board. Yeah. Uh, my two pals, MT and Whitney. This has been wonderful. Thank you. I'm so glad we all got to hang out. The initial episode of Guardians of the Galaxy. We got Loki. We got Ahsoki. We got Fiona oh. and Keiki. Got, uh, <laughs> Loki, Ahsoki, and Fioki. Good Fioki. Fioki. Yes. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Sounds delicious. I love a good Fioki uh, for dinner. I'll be honest. I'm barely going to sleep until next week. Uh, I'm so <laughs> glad. I did. Me too. I'm so glad we all got to hang out. Same here. Yeah. Well, like, where can we find you guys online? Oh, good call. I'm at Tommy Bechtold on all platforms. I'm at Whitney Puppy on all platforms. And I'm at Mastertainment on all platforms. Look at us early Hooray. adopters of all these social media. Oh my God, look at us. <laughs> yeah, look at us all getting the, the names we wanted and needed first try. We're old. Wow. <laughs> no, one's got, no one's got any weird numbers in their name or nope. underscores. If That alone should lead to some subscriptions here. We deserve it. Oh, Based yeah. on that alone. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not on all platforms. I'm only on Google Plus. So uh, yeah. just find me. There. So, yeah. yes. I'm exclusive. Find I have a deal on, with What Google was it? Plus. Google Circle? Was that the, uh, <laughs> the original one? Yeah. Find me on Google Circle. Find me on Gchat. Yeah. 
on MySpace, my GeoCities. Find me on, AIM. Uh, Find me on AIM. Get me on Instant Messenger. <laughs> SCBB Play uh, 24 was my original. I have not so. changed my away message in several decades. So uh, I got to be honest. I bet those messages are stacking up. Just <laughs> all right well dude thank you guys so much for uh listening to this we yeah. really hope that you share it with all your friends all your pals yes, we want more pals join the palaxy yeah. yeah yes join yeah. the palaxy and also don't forget to leave a thumbs up it really helps the channel yes. while we're still yes. growing we're very much a baby channel so yes. every thumbs up every comment really helps with the algorithm so yeah <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching you guys are great bye bye, bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye, buddy. Good luck finding you. You are now exiting the galaxy of uh, the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>